Hey everyone, my name's Sonny. I'm a teardown expert here at Fictive. And today we're gonna to be talking about the iRobot Brava 380T, their new RoboMop. Before we started tearing down this product, we wanted to find what three areas do we wanna focus in on. Uh, really what we decided on was one, the navigation system. They really talk about this North Star guidance system. So we wanted to make sure we looked into some of the other components they had in terms of navigation. Two is the actual suspension, how we're maintaining that even and constant contact with the floor as this thing mops. And three, looking at some of the mechanical and manufacturing processes they put into place. So everything from the assembly to the plastics they used to actually produce this product. Let's take a look at feature number one, which was that navigation system. So they talked a lot about this Nordstar navigation guidance, and what we found out really quickly was that's primarily there for surface area coverage, making sure it got a whole room, didn't miss any spots. But the actual obstacle avoidance is done on board through some mechanical switches. It's a really cheap and effective way to make that work. As, so if you can imagine getting around chairs, um, not getting wedged under a sofa, and if they get picked up, like what happens in those situations for the actual product. A few ways they did it was one, they used these mechanical switches, it's on the bumpers. So as the product runs into something, uh, the bumper activates and it basically compresses the switch here, which tells the robot, turn around, go a different direction. Another one they have is they have a drop sensor. So this is a rubber mat that sits on the floor and when, it's, when the actual product's on the floor, it's pushing up this little pin here which goes and slides in between this sensor. So it's an infrared sensor with a receiver on the other end. And when you pick it up, what happens is this arm actually gets out. And so when that connection is complete, it'll tell the robot to stop power to the wheels. And the last one's really on the wedge sensor, which we've torn apart here, but we'll have a little image for you to take a look at. But essentially what happens is as this product gets wedged under a sofa, it'll actually decompress the enclosure and that disconnects these two uh, metal components of touch which basically breaks the circuit. Uh, that'll tell the product that, hey, you're stuck, start backing out if you can. Moving on to the second feature, which is that suspension. Now this is critical because as you can imagine in a home, there's carpets, there's different layers of floor, it's uneven at places. So when you have a system like this that has three points of contact, the two wheels, and the actual mop portion of the bottom, which touches the floor, how do you make sure you maintain that even connection with the floor all the way along during bumps and carpet changes? So what we found is they basically added two degrees of freedom on the actual chassis. So you have your pitch, which this allows it to go up and down. So as you can imagine, from the rear wheels to the actual mop, it allows the mop to go up and down. And this will have a rod in here, which allows actually a second degree of freedom to left and right. So it can actually navigate different planes of a floor. The other more interesting feature that we saw was the actual way that they maintained weight in this product. So you can imagine as it's going through its mopping feature or sweeping feature, it needs to maintain a consistent amount of pressure against the floor. Now, if you're mopping, it's not a big deal. You add some water, water's pretty heavy. That's gonna weigh that machine down. But when you're just sweeping, there's no water. You still need to maintain that ground force. Um, and so how they did that with this product was they actually took these metal plates and just stacked them together and actually inserted them right inside the enclosure to maintain some weight on the floor. The last area of interest that we talked about were those mechanical and manufacturing design choices they made. Uh, so just digging into a couple of them, um, you can see here that instead of over molding in the actual magnets for the mops, so as you can imagine, this would sit on the actual body of the product and you would have these attachments that just come stick with magnets. It makes replacement really easy. But what they did, instead of over molding it in and paying for a more expensive tool, they actually just heat stake these in afterwards. So someone sat there manually, inserted the screws and actually melted plastic to hold those uh, magnets down. Another choice they made on the actual product was went pretty heavy on the ABS side, which is surprising because this is a product that's gonna be hitting walls, it's gonna be running into sofas. So you'd think you want more impact resistance in the actual product, so a PC ABS would have made more sense. Additionally, PC is a little bit heavier, so it would actually weighed down the product a bit more. But by using ABS, they were able to keep the costs and production costs low. And essentially what they did was they just added a bunch of ABS pieces and then they would take actual PC or IR proof uh, material that allowed that signal from the navigation cube to actually reach the product and overlaid it on top. So snap fit in, and now you, you still get that IR connection, that infrared connection that you need, but you maintain pretty low production cost by just using ABS. So overall, the product was actually pretty fun to break down. Nothing surprising, this is about a $300 consumer electronic product, so there's a lot of design choices made to simplify the actual, you know, you're not gonna add LiDAR or some cam uh, you know, camera-driven approach to actual navigation. You do it through dummy sensors that kind of act together to give this product a little bit more intelligence than what you'd expect. 
Um, and you see a few design changes made, like we talked about the heat staking of the magnets. There's some overmold. Instead of overmolding in the foam, they're actually just gluing it on post, uh, post manufacturing. And just a few of the components and gadgets inside. There is some intricacies done on the actual sensor and navigation. But outside of that, the mechanical portion of this, which we focus on, is quite simple. So that was a teardown of the iRobot Brava 380T. If you enjoyed this teardown and want to see others like it, subscribe below.